Welcome to CEF Insights, your source for closed-end fund information and education, brought to you by the Closed-End Fund Association. Today we are joined by Matthew Smith with the Closed-End Fund Association, who will lead the discussion with Nisha Mehta, Managing Director with Carlisle and Portfolio Manager for Carlisle Credit Income Fund, New York Stock Exchange ticker CCIF. Carlisle became the investment advisor for CCIF in July of 2023, which coincided with the change in investment strategy for the fund from mortgages to a focus on collateralized loan obligations, also known as CLOs. Carlisle has significant expertise in CLOs as one of the largest CLO managers in the world. Matthew and Nishal, we look forward to your discussion. Nishal, we're happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you, and uh, I'm happy to join the panel today to discuss CCIF and the Carlisle platform. Perfect. Well, let's dive right into it. Nishal, as we mentioned, Carlisle has specialized expertise managing and investing in collateralized loan obligations. Could we start by discussing what some of the key characteristics of CLOs are and also the advantages and risks with these investments? Sure. So a CLO is a diversified pool of two to 300 first lien senior secured loans to large companies with an average EBITDA of 600 million an average loan size of approximately $900 million. The underlying loans in a CLO have a first lien on assets with payment priority over bonds and equity. That provides downside protection resulting in a historical recovery rate of 63% relative to approximately 44% for high yield bonds. Because loans have a first lien on assets and are floating rate, they are stable asset class have only experienced three years of negative returns in the asset class's 24-year history. The U.S. loan market today is approximately 1.4 trillion in size, in line with the size of the high yield market. And CLOs only purchase perf performing loans from mature companies. There are no stress or distressed CLOs or venture CLOs. To finance the purchase of loans, the CLO manager issues debt with approximately 65% of the financing rated AAA, resulting in low cost financing. The financing and CLOs are differentiated as the financing is locked in for a 12 to 13 year period and cannot be pulled. There are no market value based triggers that could result in forced liquidations and periods of volatility either. CLO equity receives the residual cash flow from the income produced by the underlying pool of senior secured loans net of the cost of the financing. And CLOs are actively managed vehicles, where a manager or CLO manager can actively trade the portfolio over the CLO's three to five year reinvestment period. Advantages associated with the CLOs include a sizable market with a multi-decade track record and enhanced diversification. The US CLO market today is approximately 1 trillion in size, representing over 60% of the buyer base of the 1.4 trillion US leverage loan market. CLOs have performed well through multiple cycles over the past 25 years, including the financial crisis and COVID due to the stability of the underlying loan asset class and the stability of the CLO financing. Since the financing is locked in for 12 to 13 years and there are no market value triggers, a CLO can take advantage of periods of volatility by purchasing loans at a discounted price. CLOs are well diversified with each CLO holding two to 300 individual loans. Additional diversification requirements include the largest company exposure limited to 2% with the average exposure less than 0.5% of the portfolio. Industry diversification with the largest industry limited to 12 and a half to 15% and seven and a half percent limit on low rated loans or triple C loans, which possess a high likelihood of defaulting. What's interesting is the average overlap across CLOs from different CLO managers is limited to 25 to 30 percent. So as a result, a portfolio of CLOs would typically have exposure to thousands of loans, resulting in significant diversification. And similar to other uh, credit asset classes, the biggest risk for CLOs is default risk. And more importantly, losses in the underlying portfolio. CLO equity is the first loss position in a CLO, 
and therefore bears the risk of defaults and losses. The annual default rate for the LSTA loan index is approximately 2.5%, which is about a, a full percentage point below high yield bonds. At Carlisle, we use our internal credit expertise to complete bottom-up fundamental analysis on the underlying loan portfolios to seek to minimize defaults and losses. An additional risk includes failing coverage tests that sealers are subject to. These metrics are measured quarterly to protect the sealer structural structure from potential collateral deterioration. If a coverage test fails, ca cash flows are diverted from the waterfall uh, away from the seal equity to purchase additional loans until the, the tests pass again. Seal managers actively monitor these tests and communicate, communicate to the respective trustees through reporting. Great. That's really helpful as we lay the foundation here. And moving forward, now, could you discuss a little bit about your CLO equity investment strategy? Sure. So our CLO equity strategy is to generate attractive risk-adjusted returns supplemented by high current income. Uh, we are typically targeting CLOs managed by CLO managers who we believe to be the highest quality, uh, mostly with ample time remaining in the reinvestment period. Many of these portfolios appear to us to have attractive cost of capital. With active management and time left in the reinvestment periods, managers can capitalize on periods of volatility to improve portfolios or reposition them. We may target small allocation to CLOs with shorter time left in the reinvestment period if we can source high quality collateral pools that we believe can generate higher uh, returns. Now, Carlisle leverages its in-house expertise to manage the strategy, including Carlisle is a global platform with over 30 years of investing across numerous asset classes and over $350 billion in assets under management. Uh, we leverage a one Carlisle approach through the firm's 750 investment professionals and insight from our chief economist. Carlisle is also one of the world's largest uh, CLO managers with over 50 billion in assets under management and a 25 year track record across multiple, excuse me, various market cycles. In addition to being the world, one of the world's largest CLO managers, Carlisle has a 15 year track record of investing in third party managed CLOs as well. We also have a team of over 30 credit research analysts across the US and Europe dedicated to the coverage of over 700 leverage loans. This deep bench of credit research analysts allows us to complete the bottoms up fundamental analysis on each of the two to 300 loans typically seen in a CLO. In our view, our industry leading position and extensive track record is a key dif differentiator versus our peers. Great. And Nishal, what is your process to evaluate the CLO universe and make specific security selections for the strategy? Yeah, so we have a data intensive investment process that is highly automated, leveraging Carlisle's in house ex expertise. Our investment process includes 13 steps, which is broken down into four main categories. Uh, one is economic trackers. So we have three separate economic trackers, including leveraging proprietary data from the two approximately 290 companies owned by Carlisle's private equity group and financial statements from the 700 leverage loan issuers and Carlisle managed CLOs. Uh, the second step is our CLO manager diligence. Uh, since these are actively managed vehicles, we spent a significant amount of time underwriting CLO managers. And we have a multi-step CELA manager evaluation process, including a quantitative ranking system based on 96 unique performance factors and a 30 to 40 page diligence presentation that we create to evaluate the CELA manager's platform strategy and performance since inception. Uh, the third category are investment templates. Uh, we maintain automated uh, trackers for the CLO secondary market. We maintain relative value trackers, uh, CLO primary trackers, and investment committee memos to underwrite and price all investment opportunities that we see. And then lastly, uh, portfolio management, we maintain 
automated weekly, monthly, and quarterly reports to track the performance of individual CLO positions and the entire portfolio. Inclusive of the 13-step CLO investment process, uh, we focus on four key areas to complete our bottom-up fundamental analysis. Uh, those four key areas include sourcing and trading, our scale, global reach, and industry relationships enable our team to access a comprehensive origination network that is well positioned to source attractive investment opportunities. Uh, second is manager diligence, which I just walked through. Third is collateral review. We complete detailed analysis of the underlying loan portfolios based on the credit level views from the team of 30 plus industry focused credit research analysts, categorizing each underlying loan depending on the industry expert to view of overall risk. Uh, my team can gain an in-depth real-time market insight into the underlying collateral of each CLO position that evaluates, enhancing my team's ability to, to dynamically monitor the risk. We also customize uh, default scenarios and cash flow projections based on our credit research analysts of views of the underlying portfolios. And the fourth area that we focus on is CELO structure and documentation review. As one of the largest CELO managers globally with over 50 billion in assets under management, we have the expertise to develop and manage complex CELO structures and documentation. Uh, we conduct a thorough review of CLO structures and each deal is evaluated on its projected returns and ability to withstand losses in the underlying leverage loan collateral. Each CLO is also governed by a 200 page indenture, which is highly negotiated and customized. We have a head of documentation who was previously a lawyer at a global law firm to review the legal documents for each CLO. Great. Nishal, as you know, the Federal Reserve seems to be near the end of its rate hiking cycle. Inflation has slowed but remains elevated, and economic growth has been resilient. We also have significant geopolitical tensions that have contributed to volatility, as well as the upcoming U.S. presidential elections this fall. Where do you see the fixed income markets currently, and what is your outlook for 2024? Yeah, and this is a question we get often. So we, we observed a powerful rally in fixed income markets in the last two months of 2023 as inflation continued to decline. And as a result, the market pivoted its interest rate expectation. As a result, most fixed income markets ended 2023 at year to date tights. Now we're currently observing a partial reversal, reversal of the fixed income market rally uh, in the beginning of 2024 as the markets reassess interest rate expectations. However, uh, senior secured loans and CLOs, we've seen a continued rally uh, for the first month and a half of the year. These oscillations in the market's interest rate expectations and the ge geopolitical tensions and the upcoming elections, will, we think will create pockets of volatility, creating opportunities to make investments at attractive prices. Our chief economist, Jason Thomas, is anticipating a soft landing based on the proprietary data we are receiving from the portfolio companies owned by Carlisle. However, we expect the economic growth will decline in 2024 from the re resiliency observed in 2023. That's helpful. And specifically for the CLO market, what is the impact of greater volatility in the broad interest rate environment? Yeah, so market expectations can can change pretty quickly. Um, we're just seeing that recently. The market was anticipating rate cuts starting as soon as March of 2024. Um, but I think the expectation of March of rate cuts in March has has quickly dissipated. Um, we believe there is potential for a higher for longer rate environment, which can pressure borrowers of the senior secured loans since the loans are floating rate. However, we believe the average borrower in the senior school loan market can withstand the current interest rate environment. The average interest coverage ratio in the approximately 700 leverage loan issuers in Carla managed CLOs remains healthy at approximately 3.1 times, with only 4% of the companies with the interest coverage of less than one times. Given the uncertainties in interest rate movements and the decline in economic growth, 
We expect the current default rate of approximately 1.5% may return to the historical averages of 2 to 3%. Uh, we predict that defaults and restructurings will be driven by stress and distress issuers with limited options to address near term maturities. And as a result, we're constructing defensive portfolios with CELO managers that have a track record across multiple cycles and CELO portfolios that we deem to be more conservative based on a fundamental analysis of each loan. Nishal, is CLO equity currently an attractive asset class or are investment opportunities more security specific? Sure. So CLO equity has historically provided attractive risk adjusted returns, including high cash on cash yields. The average net return for CLO equity over the past 10 years is 12.4% compared to 12% for the S&P 500. And the returns for seal equity are front end loaded through quarterly cash distributions. Since 2003, excuse me, 2013, the average quarterly seal equity distribution for deals in, in reinvestment period is approximately 4% quarterly. The elevated cash and cash yields are not materially impacted by movements in interest rates as the underlying loans are floating rate based off a of SOFR. And the financing and CLOs are also floating rate based on SOFR as well. With the returns for CLO debt increasing over the past two years due to the elevated base rates, the required rate of return for CLO equity has increased as well. Uh, the expected returns for CLO equity has increased to mid to high teens versus the low teens that we've historically seen and we saw a couple of years ago. We are generally targeting CLOs with a considerable time left in reinvestment period which allows the CELA manager to actively manage the portfolio during periods of increased defaults and downgrades. And how does CLO relative value compare to that of corporate bonds? Sure, so CELO debt, which we view as more comparable to investment grade and, and high yield corporate bonds, trades anywhere from uh, 90 uh, cents on the dollar to par based on ratings, collateral quality, time left in reinvestment and other factors. Uh, however, CELA debt tranches have historically provided a higher annual return and higher yield than corporate debt with lower historical impairment rates, which results in, in higher sharp ratios. Lower rated CELA debt tranches, primarily CELA double Bs, also benefit from the convexity upside, similar to the opportunities we are seeing in investment grade and high yield corporate bonds. Understood. And what are the most significant risks in the current environment? So credit and default risk in the underlying loan portfolios remains the most important risk. And specifically, we are focused on the tails as the average borrower remains uh, fairly healthy. The underperforming companies may struggle in an environment of slowing growth and potentially a higher for longer interest rate environment and therefore, therefore struggle to refinance upcoming maturities. In these environments, we really benefit from being part of the larger Carlisle platform, including being part of the uh, one of the world's largest uh, CELO managers. Through our credit research an analysts and loan portfolio managers, we can identify and assess uh, these tail risks in the portfolios. Absolutely. And with this current environment in mind, how is your CLO equity investment strategy currently positioned? So our CELA equity portfolios are diversified by positions, CELA managers, and vintage, resulting in exposure to numerous managers and thousands of underlying loans. Using our extensive and data-intensive investment process, we have invested in CELAs that meet the following criteria. High-quality CELA managers with experience investing across various market cycles, uh, defensive portfolios constructed to navigate a higher for longer interest rate environment, and CLOs generally with ample time left in the reinvestment period, so managers can take advantage of periods of volatility and actively manage the risk in the portfolio. Excellent. And Nishal, how do you see an allocation to an actively managed strategy focused on collateralized loan obligations? best positioned in an income-oriented investor's portfolio? So we believe the attractive quarterly distributions of CELA equity is an attractive current income opportunity for investors. 
Um, Sela equity can also contribute to portfolio diversification as it has historically exhibited a low correlation to S&P 500 compared to other asset classes. And we believe CLOs are also well positioned to navigate all interest rate environments with lower impairment rates relative to similarly rated fixed income asset classes. Nishal, this insight is fantastic. And we thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts on CLOs and share more about Carlisle's strategy with us today. Thank you. We want to thank you for tuning in to another CEF Insights podcast. For more educational content, please visit our website at www.sepa.com. This material is not and is not intended as investment advice, an indication of trading intent or holdings, or the prediction of investment performance. All fund-specific information is the latest publicly available information. All other information is current as of the date of this presentation. All opinions and forward-looking statements are subject to change at any time. Carlisle disclaims any responsibility to update such views and or information. This information is deemed to be from reliable sources. However, Carlisle does not warrant its completeness or accuracy. This presentation is not intended to and does not constitute an offer or solicitation to sell or a solicitation of an offer to buy any security, product, investment advice or service, nor shall any security, product, investment advice or service be offered or sold in any jurisdiction in which Carlisle is not licensed to conduct business and or an offer, solicitation, purchase or sale would be unavailable or unlawful.